But one of our benefits of it is every year we get to go to a Connect conference. And what that is, is it's a, a regional conference somewhere, or a national one we went to last year. Two years ago, Judson and I went to San Francisco for the Connect conference. And we actually got to meet Maria, who was there learning to be a speaker and speaking at the conference. And we um, were able to walk outside and talk for a long time. So it was um, wonderful for us to get to know her. And then when we heard that she was going to be our speaker, the speaker to her, that was just a delight. So I'd like to introduce Maria from Ukraine. I can't see your last name. So. <laughs> Welcome, Maria. What is your last name, Maria? You say it for us. Last name is Snishko. Snishko. Yes. It's kind of a derivative of um, snow in Ukrainian. So I don't think it's really translated, just like last names and nonsense. Yeah, so kind of like I'm a teacher now, so for my students, I sometimes like to say, hey, think of sneeze and then go. And then like change it to sneeze go. <laughs> <laughs> so that might be, and then with a few of my classes, they have a secret. They can call me a snowflake. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> so close enough, but um, I am really glad to be here with you guys. I'm really excited and being able to see some familiar faces from a while ago, a while ago, and that was that was also such a special time um, and such a change in my life too. So I'm um, really excited to be here and be able to share my story with you guys. And I'm gonna keep it a little more concise so that at the end we can have a question and answer time because there's always some things that interest you guys more than others during any part of the story so keep those questions running so that we can, can have some time uh, to talk about different things like that. So I grew up, was born and raised in Ukraine, which is a beautiful country in Europe. For some of you who don't know, <laughs> we've got some younger um, audience. So Ukraine is a beautiful country in Europe and I had a chance to be born there and was growing up in a really good home. My parents uh, really loved us and they worked really hard to provide for us and really to make a happy childhood for us. But they had challenges, just like a lot of other families had challenges during that time where Ukraine just became a free country that same year that I was born. And so government was going through a lot of um, rebuilding, reconstruction, and just, I mean, everything was changing. So we were kind of building a brand new country. And so during a lot of um, those first years, there was barely any money in the government, or at all. And so my mom would recall stories where they would have to go to work. My mom was a nurse, my dad was an electrician. And those are all good jobs, but the company just couldn't afford to pay them. So instead they um, paid them with ration coupons and then alternated things so that they can still get some funds and be able to at least have food on their tables. That was all good, but our family was fairly large compared to most. Almost, I was the first one first born, and then almost every year after that, they had a new baby. And so by the time I was 10 years old, there was six of us at home, three boys and three girls. And so when you have those ration coupons or even just the two paychecks, you know, it, it can only go so far. And so um, we have seen from a young age God providing for us because there were times, being the oldest, and we lived in a one-bedroom apartment, I can hear a lot of the conversations late into the night. My parents would be talking, hey, what are we going to have to eat tomorrow? And winter is coming. There's not going to be any you know, fruits and vegetables or things like that. Because my dad would also, outside of his full-time work, he would go to the village where his mom lived and his siblings and have like a little plot of land where he would grow some things. And he would drive, he was about, 16 miles on the bicycle to get there, and even in the winter time, he would drive that far uh, to get some milk for us. And so, he was doing everything he can 
along with my mom, but sometimes there's just still not enough. And so from a young age, um, they, they took us to church. And we know God, we knew God, we knew that he answers prayers. And we have seen literally miracles happen in our family where um, we would wake up in the morning and there would be a huge box of rice and pasta sitting. We had no idea where it came from, who dropped it off, and couldn't even say thank you to anybody. It was just like, God just providing for us because literally the night before we were praying about it. Or a neighbor would stop by and bring us a loaf of bread just because she was standing in line to get bread for herself and her son and thought of us. And just things like that. And so we knew that if we ever needed anything or wanted anything, we can pray to God and he'll listen. And so growing up in that kind of environment, was really good, but there were also challenges um, in school because I was the only Christian in my class, and the communist ideas of there's no God were still really prevalent. You know, just because Soviet Union, the Union doesn't exist anymore doesn't mean that the ideas went away. And so the kids would listen to their parents at home talk about things like this, and then they would come come back to school and make fun of me for going to church, for believing in God, for praying. I, I mean, I didn't dress any different, besides being wearing more skirts than pants, but um, they just thought they, you know, they could pick on me, and I only had a total of two friends, but even they didn't, you know, stand up for me that much. And so a lot of the times I'll go home crying and ask mom, why mm -hmm. am I different? Or why do they feel like they can tease me? And so she would explain to me that just like Jesus was not welcome on this earth and he was always um, made fun of and persecuted, same way it's going to apply to us. And so we just have to live through it. And so I had to, you know, I could still go to school and, you know, take it all in and not be able to, you know, fight back. And teachers loved me for the most part because I was a really good student. I listened to them and I helped out other students and I was really well behaved compared to everybody else. And so those are the things that were going for me when everything else wasn't. But by the time I was 10 years old, it just got to be too much. And so I started praying that God would just show me that He really loved me for who I am. Not just, like, that He would take care of me, in, whether it was at school or anything else. And so through that simple prayer, I just kind of left it wide open. And that was the year that things kind of started going not in a good direction, but that's what God used to turn things around as well. Um, my mom became really ill and had to go to a hospital four hours away and so this was during our holiday break from about new year's to after until after our christmas which happens in january 7th and we were kind of disappointed because family is all we had my parents couldn't afford to give us gifts so we grew up without ever having gifts and we just, we got used to going to church because that's where we would receive a little package of candy. Always look forward to that, especially on the third day of Christmas because that's when um, the children's service was. And we even got to participate in the service and then at the end we knew that we would get some candy. Um, so not having mom at home was really difficult. But when she was released from the hospital in Kiev, she attended another service there. Um, and it was also third day of Christmas and they had a children's program. And at the end of it, instead of just giving out a small you know, package of candy to the kids in Kiev, they gave out an entire shoebox to each child, uh, along with the booklet, The Greatest Gift. And so mom was able to be one of the volunteers to help pass out the shoeboxes. Well, at the end, they had a few left over. And when that happens, they would keep those boxes for uh, future outreaches or send them off to the next location. Somehow, they, uh, they found out that she has six kids at home and that she was there, you know, that entire holiday break. They gave her three shoeboxes to take home to her kids. And so one of them was like this, and the other two were wrapped just in wrapping paper. 
and we were waiting for her at home, and it was getting to be late in the night when she came by train, and it was way past midnight. Um, of course, we were staying up to see mom, and we weren't going to go to sleep, no way. And so she comes with, you know, just her regular bags and three boxes, and we're thinking, oh, hey, you know, like, new shoes or something like that, because we would have never thought that it could be gifts. And she tells us how everything happens, and how she ended up with these boxes. And so as soon as we found out they were gifts, we drop them in the middle of our living room floor and just start opening them up. And just imagine our excitement. Not having Christmas gifts ever and then knowing that this is a Christmas gift and seeing all the fun things in there. Like, you know, a lot of different toys. I don't remember exactly everything that was in there because for us that was way too much. So we ended up sharing it. But I do remember having uh, like little toy cars there, stuffed animals. Um, a lot of the school supplies we got to keep, especially the little eraser toppers that go on, the, on top of a pencil. That was just such a novelty to us. <laughs> um, and also candy canes, which at first we didn't know what it was, so we tried to attach it to the wall and use it as a hook to hang your clothes on. <laughs> um, <laughs> it didn't work too well. <laughs> so because we made so much noise, our neighbors came to see us, what's happening in that family, and they, one of them has a TV in, so she's like, hey, I think that's... You know, I saw it in a TV show. I think it's candy. You know, let's try that. And so that worked a lot better. Um, and I remember hygiene items, having the colorful toothpaste instead of just the regular white one that you know the cheapest one is in the in the stores. Um, toothbrushes. We used we used our toothbrushes until there was no more bristles. <laughs> Honestly, we just we had to stretch everything. And. I mean, after that, having all of this stuff, we were able to take it back to school with us and show it off to all of the kids who, in the past, would always bring their things that they had under their tree that holiday season and show off their toys and things like that. But here we are bringing things like eraser toppers and the yo-yo that lines up. I mean, yo-yo was just the biggest thing. Just like spinners are right now, that was the yo-yo back then. <laughs> um, and so we had the one that lights up. Nobody had that. And now they're surrounding us. And now they're wanting to be our friends. And they are not calling us mean names or me, because I was in a separate class than my siblings, but they experienced similar things. and or just able to kind of testify to them that this is that same God that you made fun of that has made this happen. Because because of that special delivery that we had of those shoeboxes, we were the only family in our entire city to receive the shoeboxes, as far as I know. And our city is about 60,000 people at that time, I think, more or less. And there wasn't a lot of Christians. Maybe our church was about, about a thousand members, and then plus a lot of kids. But we're the only ones, and especially in our school. And then to have something cool like this was just incredible. Um, for for the kids, it was it was one of those things that you really don't need a lot of words because they know that I was different, and they were making fun of me. And now all of a sudden, I have the coolest stuff. <laughs> and this one way that God answered my prayer, where I was just you know, crying out to him, because I was just so tired of that bullying. And after that, we stayed, so I was 10 years old, we stayed in Ukraine for another two years. And I had no problems at all with bullying or being called names for being a Christian. Another way that God has answered my prayers was through a simple box of credits. Mm -hmm. And that is incredibly special to me because I'm an artist and I loved drawing and painting and creating things ever since I could draw. I mean, at age four, I illustrated my first book by copying a fairy tale. So I had a fairy tale book, I copied all the pictures and it was put together and then displayed during a, like an open house type of a, uh, event. So since then, my mom, <laughs> Um, signed me up for an art club 
at our city, which was provided by the government and it was free to any of the residents. And so I was able to go to art club and learn how to draw more and how to paint. And even by age 10, I was already using oil paints. Just, I was just, I loved it. And I was pretty good at it, I would like to think. So when we got our crayons, we actually didn't know what it was at first. So we were comparing it to all the things that we didn't know. So like a markers or colored pencils. And as you know, crayons are a lot shorter. They don't have lead inside. They don't have a cap. A totally different texture. And it comes in a wrapper. So we just took off the wrappers. And guess what? Ate it. <laughs> 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 and kids, have you guys tried eating crayons? No. Have you guys tried eating crayons? <laughs> <laughs> they don't taste yeah, very good. Yeah. <laughs> they were just for fun or a dare or something, but not because you didn't know what it was. And so it was later that one of my siblings, um, probably a younger brother, um, actually made a mark, either in a coloring book or on the wallpaper. And we were like, wow. <laughs> this is incredible. Like, this is not anything that we could have ever asked for because we had no idea what it was. And for God to send something like this and be in one of those shoeboxes and be so specific to me. I mean, I just held on to this because it was, it was, it was one of those things where it's like, wow, like God is giving me way more than I could have ever asked for and showing me that he really truly loves me and cares for me for who I am because he knew my creative spirits and my talents and just giving me another tool to pursue that and to spark that imagination and use that and so even later on crayon was one of the was the, the medium that I used in one of my first uh, paid artworks when I was here in the States, our teacher, we created a work of art with crayons and it was submitted into a calendar competition. And what, my, my piece was one of the finalists. And so one day she just brought me a $50 check. It's like, what? How does that? You know, like, it, it is just, it's so incredible. And uh, later on, being able to go to college and study art and make that a career. And I can't say that all of it started from here. It was just another piece that God used in that entire process. But still so amazing in that critical time when I was praying that God would just become real to me and show me that he loved me. And he chose to use a shoebox. And then within that, just a box of prayers mm. to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. So I'm incredibly grateful to all of you guys who Shoe boxes without ever knowing who receives them and the impact that it had on them. But you pray and you trust that God puts it into the hands of a child that needs it exactly what they need it. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Do you have any questions? Wasn't that wonderful? Amen. Yeah. And, um, Maria. I was really hoping she'd share that crayon story because when we first met her, she told us about eating the crayons. And <laughs> <laughs> so if you have questions for Maria, she's yeah. We only have one. Go ahead. Um, is that your actual shoebox? It is not. It is not. None of the items survived except for one. So obviously we used the crayons for as long as we were there. And there's when we moved here, there's only so much that you can take. So we couldn't take a lot of things. And a lot of the things we shared. So we shared a lot of the things. We kept just a few for us and took a lot of them to school and to our neighbors and just gave it out. But um, the picture that was inside the box, I still have. Unfortunately, I don't have it with me because somehow in all of my moving and rearranging and things like that, I misplaced it. It was always in my Bible. So the picture that we had, unfortunately, did not have a name on the back of it, and there was no letter, as far as we know. So we have the picture of the family that packed it, but we have no idea who it is. So I always have it with me in hopes that I will one day find that family and be able to thank them for what they did. Yes, good question. You're a teacher now? Yes. What are you teaching where? Yeah. I'm teaching arts in Cleveland, Ohio. So I just moved there 
in August. But before that, I lived in South Dakota with my family. The whole family is over here. Mm -hmm. The family is still in South Dakota. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. mm. Tell about the book that um, Operation Small put into the. Yeah, the greatest gift. Um, greatest gift is included with each box when it's distributed, <laughs> and it's printed in the language of the children receiving it. And so, just because we were Christians already, I think we ended up giving those three booklets away to either our neighbors or whoever. That would be a better question for my mom if she still remembers. But now things are done a little bit different during distributions. You're probably not going to hear another one like mine. So that's why I kind of like to call it special delivery. Like it was just, it had to, it had to take that to get to us. And right now, a lot, and even right now in Ukraine, my sister was actually a part of one distribution. And so what happens is they um, created like an outreach event. The location was the center of the city, kind of like our downtown here. And they invited, they reached out to the schools in that city and invited the children to come to that. I'm not sure how they called it, either like children's festival or just something for the kids. I would have to ask her exactly how the invitation was phrased, but they they worked with the churches there, and it was the person from the church that was organizing the outreach event, and he um, notified the church that this was going to be happening and that they're welcome to invite their unchristian uh, friends and kids of their friends, but they would encourage the Christians and the kids that already came to church not to come to that event because they're already in church, they know about God, and maybe they had something something else going for them. But this specific event was just for the kids that were not Christian. And so they had a group of kids from the church singing, and then there was um, youth that had a little program going for them, and they showed um, the story of Jesus on one of those felt things, whatever, uh, whatever it's called correctly. And then at the end, they gave out the shoeboxes to the children, along with the booklets. And a lot of the times, the, those same kids would be invited to come back and go through the Greatest Journey Discipleship Program, which is a 12-lesson course um, about, you know, with the Bible, through the Bible. And most of the time, by the end of that course, the kids receive Christ, and they have graduation. Mm -hmm and they're encouraged to go back home and tell everything they learned to their parents, to their grandparents, uncles, their relatives, their friends. So that's how just um, the gospel spreads just through one shoebox and just reaching the kids and they can be, you know, the most naive and the ones that are not afraid to share the gospel when they find out something super exciting. <laughs> have, have you heard about Operation Christmas Child before you received your box? And then no. when did you make that connection when you moved to the States? Yeah, so we had no idea. All we knew was just that picture. We had no idea who it was. We had no idea about the ministry. So when we came to, to the States and we were in our youth group, our youth pastor brought these go boxes. They, they were still flat and so he showed us how to fold it and then he gave us a pamphlet of what goes in there and what shouldn't go in there and how to select a boy and a girl and put it all just explained it all and then the entire time he's explaining we're like sitting towards the back of the church and I'm like pushing my mom and shopping her and like hey I think this is what we received just like a couple of years ago and that was another thing like we received one of the two boxes and then the other ones were wrapped in the wrapping paper and so I recognized the box because it was just it was you know not a lot not a lot of time went by since we received the box and then since we moved and you know saw this in church and so right away we were just so excited we started packing it and um, in that first year we ended up we went to do one for a boy and one for a girl we went shopping to a dollar store and somehow we ended up with enough stuff to fill six boxes so then we had to go back to the store and get four more toothpaste and four more toothbrushes so that each one had the essentials. Um, and after that, like each year, we kind of, a family tradition developed where the girls would go shopping and then the boys would pay for shipping. 
<laughs> so, because we all had our paper rounds and we delivered papers, so although I was, at that time, we moved when I was 12 years old, and so by that time I was either like 14 or 15, and so right away we had our cash, and so we could afford to go shopping and pay for the shipping. So we've done that and really up until last year, and last year we kind of decided to do something different. My birthday is in December, and I was turning 25, so I'm like, hey, you know, that's pretty big, let's, let's do something. So I was inviting a lot of friends to come to an ice skating rink, because uh, that's kind of a neutral ground where friends that don't talk to each other can still <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> and, you know, we can enjoy the events. And I love ice skating, and a lot of my friends do now. Now they do. Um, so as I was inviting them, they're like, hey, you know, so what should we bring? I don't need anything. I've got everything I need. You know, just, just pray for me. That's going to be enough. <laughs> and they were still asking about it. They're like, well, we have to bring you something. So how about, like, we surprise you or whatever. So at that point, I'm, I was thinking, like, over my year, and that was the year where I got to go to training um, to, like, really see a Praise Christmas Child at the Connect Conference. And I started sharing my story last year in August, September time. And I mean, there's just so many changes, and I was just so incredibly grateful and very impacted by the Operation Christmas Child once again uh, through the speaking opportunities and through the people I got to meet. And so I was like, hey, we can do we can do like a packing party. And so I asked all my friends to bring just a few items for the shoeboxes. Kind of left it wide open. I didn't really organize it well. Now looking back, I could have structured it more, but it still worked out. And I had a bunch of them that brought just soap, or just stuffed toys, or just toothpaste and toothbrushes because they were working in a dental office, so they could get those things uh, cheaper than most, if not for free. And so we we had 25 shoe boxes like this. Um, I asked one of my friends to um, to share her because she ordered 100. And we kind of set things up, and then I had even a few friends that were so excited about it, they packed shoeboxes ahead of time. <laughs> and so they just brought their, like, a dozen boxes. Like, it was just incredible to me to see the excitement. A lot of surprise that even some of my friends didn't even know about shoeboxes, so I got to introduce them that way as well. And so by the time everything was said and done, we were packing them, and we see that there's still stuff left over. So we're scrambling to find more shoe boxes and by the end of the evening we had 50 <laughs> boxes. Now. And so I was just blown away, amazed that on the goal of 25, one for each year we had double that. And then still um, a little later I packed two my mom packed two more and then I had another one. So last year we had 53, which is now, thinking about it, I'm just like, how do I beat that <laughs> no, <laughs> this year? <laughs> now that we're in the city, I guess I could do another packing party, but um, yeah, so that's kind of how we found out about it and got involved and started packing it, packing quite a bit, and really excited. We always try to include the picture of our family in there and put a name on it. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I had one response last year, one of our shoeboxes ended up in Mexico. I'm sure a lot of them did, but we got a response from Mexico. Um, little girl and her mom messaged me on Facebook mm -hmm. saying, mm, you know, she had a picture of the girl holding the box and the things in the box. And just, oh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. She's so yeah. One more. What would you suggest is an important thing to put in the box? Important thing? Good, good question. Very good question. I've been sharing a lot with um, middle schoolers and high schoolers the last two days. And I asked them that same question. What is the most important thing that you should put in the box? Or what is the first thing you should put in the box? And I think that is definitely prayer. Mm -hmm. So when you start with prayer and you just ask God to inspire you, to prompt you as to what he wants you to put in there, I think that's going to be the most impactful box, the most um, efficient and quality box. Mm -hmm. So I would start with that and then, uh, yeah, the rest is whatever God says is important. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for coming to, you've impacted us in being able to, sh to see, put a face to the boxes mm -hmm. that are being received, being packed, that are being received. So we have a gift for you, I have to explain it. 
first off, we have an ornament that you can put on your own tree this year from Paulsbo, because as we know, everyone around here knows my fairy to get somewhere. But because I knew the story ahead of time, we got her some art supplies, small enough to travel with. <laughs> and chocolate. It's chocolate. It's always chocolate.